All right, I'll go ahead and get started now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for today's special session of the KCI Institute Lectures, Reading with Vision Loss, Tools and Technology for Accessing the Written Word, presented by KC Vision Rehabilitation Spe Specialist, Dr. Alan Labram. Dr. Labram provides one-on-one -on -one consult consultations to help people with vision loss manage daily activities and enjoy a high-quality life. My name is Ellie Inns, and I'm on the protocol and events team here at OHSU, and I will be acting as the moderator for today's session. I'm going to quickly go over a few housekeeping items for this meeting before kicking it over to your presenter. During the question and answer section of today's talk, we'll be answering emails sent in before and during the event. Please feel free to send in your questions at any time to Joan. If you would like to receive a full list of resources that Dr. Lieber mentions in his talk, you can also email Joan for this. Joan's email is conj at ohsu.edu. That's K-A-H-N-J at ohsu.edu. If you have any technical issues, please email minor s at ohsu.edu. That's M-I-N O R S at ohsu.edu. If you are joining us with a mobile device or tablet, you may not be able to see the presenter slides, but we are recording this session for later viewing on the KCI Institute webpage, um, which is www.ohsu.edu slash AMD. Those links and emails are listed here on your screen for you. And with that, I'm going to turn over turn it over to your speaker for today, Dr. Alan Labrum. Hello, good after, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me to on this Halloween um, afternoon. Um, so today we'll be speaking uh, we'll be speaking to you about um, reading with vision loss and uh, learning about some strategies to to help you overcome some of the difficulties. Uh, this is a really important topic uh, for me because. This is the, the, the most common uh, goal uh, that my patients have. Um, so I have no disclosures. And so today's objective is, is I would like you to become um, familiar with available options that can assist you with uh, reading uh, to realize that you do not have to give up. Dr. Labrum? Uh, yes? Could you do the um, screen share again? It didn't uh, take. Oh, not work. Uh, okay. Is it not working? There it goes. Okay, so let's backtrack a, a bit here. So we went over the objectives. So the next slide is um, reading and macular degeneration. So today, the, the strategies I'll be uh, talking about will be helpful for anybody with uh, vision loss, but I, I, there, I do have a, a, a focus towards uh, macular degeneration uh, for, this, for this talk. Um, first, I want to introduce the concept of a uh, scotoma. And so when my patients come in and see me, they, they say, you know, there's a, a blur spot in, in, my, in my central vision. Uh, they can describe it as um, like a black spot or just a missing um, a spot in the middle that uh, has like missing images or like a missing nose or missing letters. Um, you know, they, they come in various uh, you know, shapes and, and sizes. Uh, usually um, it's cent central, but, uh, you know, it, 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 the, uh, the specific location can, can, can vary. So I wanted to give you some, some images here to kind of explain uh, some of the differences people can see. Uh, so on the, on the left here, if you kind of follow my, my cursor, um, you, there's, there's a center um, really uh, you know, black spot. So that's called the absolute scotoma, where there, you can't see anything at that spot. But around it, it looks more like a, a haze. That's called a relative scotoma. So you still have some functional uh, retinal cells there. Um, and this is where people uh, maybe report having images look washed washed out. And, and so even though those cells um, are, are not working properly, uh, we can kind of take advantage of the, the edge of that vision by increasing the contrast. If you look over to the image on the right, um, this is uh, a scotoma that is uh, where the image is causing a little bit of a wavy distor distortion, and that's called metamorphopsia. And it, it can be problematic when you're when you're trying to read, for instance, um, 
you know, because the text does not appear to be on this, you know, on the same line. Sometimes it, um, anyways, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a wave. So probably some, um, some difficulties there. And so next I want to talk about some just general um, uh, concepts first to kind of optimize the, the vision. And then later on, I'll go more into detail and, and, and uh, you know, with these individual um, strategies. And so, you know, first main concept is just to enhance contrast. And, you know, so, so this proper lighting, um, electronic screens like tablets, uh, for instance, with uh, their backlit. Um, and you want to have black on white or white on black. So that's, just, that's full contrast, um, uh, for, 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 for instance. And then there's uh, magnification. And so um, the with magnification, you know, you, you want to make the image bigger than your blurred, blurred spot. And, and, and so you can have, you can do this by just having large print books, or you can use optical or electronic magnifiers to uh, make the image uh, bigger. And so other, other potential strategies that can help you with, with reading. And so, uh, if, actually, before I talk about that, let's, let's, let's look over to the image to the, uh, the right of the, uh, of the slide here, uh, where my cursor is. And so here I, I, I typed up October. Um, and, and so the kind of like the, 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 the black circle that I, I made here kind of represents a scotoma. And you can see it, it kind of blocks uh, a couple of the, uh, the letters. Um, and so the, the idea uh, with, with reading rehabilitation, which is one of the strategies that uh, the occupational therapist can, can work with you um, to, to train you to, uh, you know, to improve reading. Um, you know, and one of the, um, I guess, the, the, the specific uh, aspects of the training is scotoma awareness to, to kind of realize, um, you know, where the blood spot is, the, the size of it, and how it's affecting your vision. So once you're aware of, of this scotoma, um, the occupational therapist can teach you how to move it out of the way, essentially. And that's called eccentric viewing training. And this is actually quite, quite difficult. Um, you know, we all want to use our central vision uh, uh, to look you know, straight ahead at, some, at something. Um, but with, with training, um, which requires, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of, um, um, I guess, uh, uh, mo motivation um, and practice to, to re retrain your brain to look off center. And so we usually use um, a, a clock and, and we kind of, uh, you know, figure out where to have you look by using clock hours. And so if we say, you know, if we find that you, you see best when you look at the 12 o'clock position, um, then the occupational therapist can, can um, you know, teach you to, to do that. And so if you look at October on the bottom, uh, part of the uh, um, where my cursor is here. That's uh, this is kind of an example of what I mean. So if you move the scotoma up a little bit, then you can see you know more of the uh, uh, of, of the word, um, and, and making it, it makes comprehension reading a little bit quicker. Um, you, you, you may not be able to move the scotoma completely out of the way, um, you know, and and and. You know, success uh, with eccentric viewing is 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 is, is quite uh, variable because it depends on like the size of of that scotoma, um, you know, the, the placement of the scotoma, but also like cognitive skills um, as as well and as well as motivation, which I mentioned earlier. Um, but it's it's something that uh, you know it's a, it's a, it's a it's an option um, for the right uh, candidate. Um, also, as you can imagine, you. Your, your, um, even if you can move the, the scotoma kind of out of the way, um, when you when you move from word to word, you have to refixate. And and patients say to me is you know, every time I I I, I, I move it, I look at a different uh, target or image, I have to refocus, and that's because you have to you know reposition that scotoma, and so. With 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 scotoma training, um, the hope is to stabilize the fixation, which will um, help with tracking 
Um, but you also have to do some training with it, with it, with the tracking. So you only have, not only have to like move the scrotoma out of the way, and looking straight, you also have to, have, have to move your eyes from side to side and keep that uh, scrotoma out of the way. And so that, that uh, requires some exercises. But uh, w one thing you can use to help with tracking is a, is a type of scope, uh, which is this image on, on the bottom left-hand corner here. Um, and, and that just isolates the line of text. Um, and it's, it's, it's a, a dark contrasting color. And, and, the, and the dark contrasting color helps with reducing glare as well. And so other strategies help with reading. Um, you know, if, if, if eye movement is, if we're utilizing, um, trying to use, uh, utilize eye movement optimally, uh, we have to make sure both eyes are working properly. And as, as you age, um, you know, con um, converging your eyes or diverging your eyes be becomes a little more uh, challenging, uh, especially with people uh, who have uh, vision, vision loss because, um, your visual acuity may not be uh, equal between two eyes, or uh, you know, so. You know, so this is something we have to evaluate, and and one one uh, solution to help um, help help with uh, you know, your binocular vision, having your eyes work together, is, is the use of prisms. Another potential strategy is blocking blue light. Um, blocking blue light, uh, either with a, a yellow lens, for example, or rose color lens, or yeah, even um, um, a clear uh, lens called Prevencia um, can reduce glare um, as well as um, it, it improves the comfort um, when you're when you're reading on a, a tablet or a computer, for for, for instance. Um, and, and sometimes some people find like looking, looking through a yellow lens or another color tinted lens can actually help uh, enhan enhance the contrast. Uh, so I think you may have talked about lighting uh, earlier with, with Catherine, um, but I just want to uh, touch on this. Um, you know, so just want to emphasize position of lighting is the most important. Um, the, 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 the light bulb itself is, is there's a preference for it. But that's that's more secondary. Um, you know the position that you you want to have like the light on your side of the better seeing eye, uh, and you want to have you want to have some kind of adjustable uh, neck, like a goose neck, for for instance. Um, you know, so you can angle it uh, where the the light reflects away from your better seeing eye to reduce glare. Uh, with macular degeneration, the the you know studies show that the um, preferred um, color temperature is in the 5,000 Kelvin. That's kind of like a white, uh, white color, like an LED light. Um, but again, this is, this is, you know, that's just the average, but this is a, there's a preference to this. And so just because that's the average doesn't mean that's what you prefer. Um, and so in, in my exam room, I use this on, uh, this gooseneck lamp on the left here, uh, called the giraffe lamp. Um, and I just use a, 60 watt incandescent light bulbs. Nothing, nothing special. Um, you know, this this lamp is about three hundred and fifty dollars, and and so I don't. You know, it's a great lamp, but I don't think you need to spend that that much money on on a lamp. The this this lamp on the in the middle here is a, a Trond a T R O N D lamp I found on on Amazon, and has all the features. That I'm looking for, you know, the, the adjustable neck. It has a LED light bulb. You can you can position it. Um, you know, it, it you can direct the light in, in one direction, uh, so to reduce the glare. And there's other 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 things too that actually is very helpful. Like it, there's it, they have like three color temperatures, and so uh, you know this particular one has like three three thousand Kelvin, four uh, four thousand five hundred Kelvin. And six thousand, so you can choose the color temperature you want just by you know turning the dial. Um, and this this lamp is only twenty dollars, um, and so just to kind of give you an idea, yeah, I'm not I'm not advocating that this is the lamp for you, but um, you know that you know just as long as you um, keep some of those concepts in, in mind, it can be it doesn't have to be an expensive lamp. And, and and the link I have up here, um, you know, uh, Joan Khan uh, can 
provide you with uh, some of the resources. This is more information about lighting. Uh, so when I when I when I see a patient, um, you know, one of the first things I, I, I like to do is a trial frame refraction to make sure that they are seeing the best they they can. Um, because uh, most patients, when they come to see me, they've um, you know they went to another eye doctor and they did um, with refraction using a um, a phoropter, which is this uh, um, device here on the the right. And you know, those are those can be difficult to use if you have a central blur spot uh, or or any type of uh, reduced vision actually, because like when they when they, when the when the doctor shows you the options one or two. Uh, the increments are quite small, and so it could be pretty hard to, to tell the difference. And so I like to use a trial frame here, and and and, and um, sometimes not always, but sometimes I can get uh, um, you know better uh, vision. Um, but also, you know, once once the glasses on are on with the you know, optimal distance prescription, then I can show you more magnification for for reading. And so, you know, patients usually come in with with standard. Um, you know, reading prescription, uh, standard magnification, but it, you know, the, the prescription can go stronger, and I, you know, I can give you more magnification. The downside is you have to hold things a little bit closer than, um, you know, than, than, than the sixteen inches or twelve inches that, that you normally used to hold things. Um, and so, if, if you're if you're comfortable with holding things a little bit closer, then you can have more magnification in your glasses. Well, this is an example of, of what I mean um, by by magnification and, and how it can help you. And so, the image on the on the left here is the, is October again with the, the with that central scotoma blocking a couple of letters. But if we uh, if I give you a, a three times magnifier, so the circle represents uh, a magnifying lens, and then you know October is magnified three times. Now the scotoma is still there. I can't get rid of that, but at least it only blocks uh, a portion of one letter, you know, versus um, you know more, multiple letters, and so it's just easier to comprehend that. And so for for magnification, there's you know optical devices uh, that have been around for de you know decades. Um, you know each each optical device may not uh, solve all your all your reading issues. Um, and, and you may need, you know, more than one type depending on what you're trying to do. Um, but I, I kind of want to give a, just a quick overview of some of the uh, available optical uh, devices uh, available for reading. And so the first one here is um, uh, this is a handheld magnifier with an LED light. Uh, these are these are nice for spot reading uh, if you're reading sign um, the labels or or if you're taking um, if you're going to a restaurant trying to read the menu. Um, you know, it's 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 small, so you can carry your your bag, uh, for for instance. Uh, the downside is that you know if you have tremors, um, or if you you know your hands fatigue easily, um, you know it, it, it may not be for for you. Um, and and sometimes like reading a whole a whole novel with this may be kind of cumbersome. Uh, the next next to the handheld magnifier, this is a stand uh, magnifier. And uh, this this allows you to place the device right on a tabletop uh, and, and and slide across uh, the text. Um, it's a little, little more bulky, but it, it works pretty well. Um, but you need some kind of type of flat surface to, to use it. Uh, next to that is a, a dome magnifier. Um, these are usually pretty small; can fit in your um, in your pocket, but uh, they're usually low low power. Um, and down here is a, a bar magnifier. Also, there this is also something that's low power, but it, it's it's nice if you have just a kind of a, 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 a mild uh, vision loss um, because it has um, it has it usually comes with like a red line or a yellow um, band, uh, which which helps with isolating uh, a line of text and you know, can help with tracking. Uh, next to that is um, this is a, a Microscopic glasses, and so they're like really high-powered reading glasses. And so, you know, some people uh, find this help helpful, but you do have to hold the reading material, um, you know, very close. So when it's when it's like when it's when it's like this strong, it's probably you're probably holding the reading material within a, a, a few inches of your of your face. Um, 
Now, the, the pair of glasses here, um, last pair is called a tele, telemicroscope. And this is, this, this is for somebody who wants to have a greater working distance, but still have um, more magnification. Uh, you see surgeons wear this, uh, these glasses or, or, or dentists, for, for example. Um, you know, the, da the downside is that the field of view is quite small. So we're looking at probably somewhere in the 10 to 20 degrees um, you know, visual field. And so if you can imagine reading, uh, you know, with, with a visual field that's small, you're, you're not seeing like the, you're not seeing many words at, at a time. So you have to do a lot of uh, scanning. Um, and it's, uh, it takes a little bit of practice to, to keep track of which uh, line you're, you're on. Okay, so if you're trying to optimize everything, we might as well try to uh, talk about, uh, you know, different, you know, every, every, every aspect of, of reading, and that, can, and that includes, font, you know, the font. Um, and so a study came out, um, and, and, and uh, it showed that courier font is the the um, the best font for patients with macular degeneration, and that is um, it's thought um, to be the best font because it has more more spacing, um, and uh, there's a better um, letter and word recognition with this, this font. You know, I considered using this font throughout the whole um, presentation, but how uh, you know, I just I decided to stick with like what's what's tried and true, what most people are most uh, familiar with. Um, however, you know, you know, this font, you know, may be uh, most beneficial in the study, but it may not be uh, your preference, you know, or the preference for everybody. And so I would recommend just, just trying it uh, um, at, at home and seeing what you think. Okay, so uh, next I would like to talk about adaptive technology, and this is um, technology designed to maintain or enhance the capabilities of people with a disability. Um, now, this is something that uh, is is very kind of exciting uh, uh, to me because um, there, there's um, it opens up so many possibilities, um, but also it, it, the technology is evolving and getting better all, all the all the time. Um, and, and and so you know, I saw a video the other day. Uh, talking about uh, a company called uh, Neuralink that uh, Elon Musk started about, uh, you know, just uh, bypassing the damaged eye and, and, and sending electrical signals straight to the brain to help uh, individuals overcome um, the vision, uh, overcome the vision impairment and, and, and see better. But I mean, that's that's more in the future. Today, I'm, I'll, I'll be talking more about, you know, stuff that are uh, uh, available now or in the near future. Um, also, I wanted to kind of point out uh, a, a YouTube channel called The Blind Life, and, and you know, this gentleman named Sam, he does an awesome job with reviewing, you know, current uh, adaptive technology, and his, his, his channel is quite extensive, so he's, he's reviewed, you know, uh, um, you know, dozens and dozens of, of different uh, technologies, so I recommend, um, you know, watching his videos to learn, to learn more. And so this is Catherine. I, you, you, you probably met her uh, earlier uh, in the talk at, at um, earlier today. Uh, this, I, I just wanted to show this photo because she she's uh, utilizing uh, some adaptive technology here. She's she has a, a portable magnif uh, portable electronic magnifier, and she's using some accessibility features on her um, um, Apple computer. And then she has her her iPhone. And we're going to kind of dive into some of these uh, features in just a, just a moment here. So electronic mag magnifiers, and so you know electronic magnifiers, uh, you know, also called CCTVs. They're they're not they're not new. Um, however, you know the, the the quality of of them have you know have been improving, and there's additional kind of features that we'll be talking about uh, to today. But the idea is just to electronically magnify um, you know the, the text that you're trying to read. Um, and the nice thing about uh, electronic magnifiers is that, you know, the the, the magnification is 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 is, is um, you know can can can, get, can vary. Um, uh, you know, you can you can make it bigger uh, according to what your what your vision is. And so, if if because macular degeneration uh, is a progressive condition, 
Um, your vision may get worse. Um, you know, you need to, you may need to increase the size of the, uh, the text, um, you know, you know, compared to when you first bought the device. And so this instrument or this, you know, this type of technology allows you to do that. Whereas an optical magnifier, you know, it may work at a time of, of purchase, but then maybe a couple of years later, you know, you may need a different um, device. So first device I want to highlight here is called the DaVinci HD CCTV magnifier by enhanced uh, vision. And, you know, this is a, a desktop uh, device. Um, and the, the neat thing about this device is that it has a, a rotating uh, camera. Um, and so not only can it um, point down to the, the um, your piece of mail or your book that you're trying to read, um, but it all could, you can also rotate towards your face. And so you can use it to, um, you know, your, your face will be, uh, you know, shown on the, on the screen and you can magnify it. And, and so you can use this for, you know, shaving or applying makeup, for instance, or, um, or you can rotate the camera, you know, the other way and you can see things in the distance. Um, and so you know, there's, there's, there's various uh, things you can do because like, the, the, the camera is movable. But, but also this device has OCR technology. Um, and I'll be talking uh, talk about this a lot um, with other devices as, as well, because it's becoming more, more common. Um, it, it's OCR stands for optical character recognition. And it just, it, 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 uh, it, it converts text to speech. And so if, if, for example, if you are, you know, using your, um, this device to read, you make the, the text bigger on the screen, you're reading, and then after, you know, 30 minutes, you're, you're tired. Um, you know, your eyes are getting tired, you want to take a break. Well, you can, you can activate your uh, OCR, uh, text-to-speech um, feature, and it can continue reading for you. And so you can rely on audio, audio features or li listening to the text um, to get through the rest of the uh, material that you're trying to read. And so the downside of that uh, other devices was that it was a desktop, you know, it's, it's big, it's bulky, you probably can only use it or, you know, you're probably limited to using it in one room. Um, and, and, and so it, it may be kind of um, inconvenient to always have to, like, take your reading material to that, uh, to that uh, room to use it. So, you know, there's some other devices that are more portable. This here is the uh, Transformer HD by Enhanced Vision. It has a similar uh, camera. But as you can see, the, the device is, you know, is, is foldable, and it's actually lightweight as well. And you can connect. It doesn't have a, um, a monitor attached, but you can uh, connect it to, you know, your tablet, uh, maybe a Wi-Fi, or you can connect it to your TV or monitor, whatever whatever screens you have at home uh, in, in in whatever whatever room. And so this is a, a, a device called Humanware Reveal 16i. Um, I think I, I represents interactive because. You know, this, uh, there are devices that are portable and foldable um, that are also, that you can connect to the, in, to the internet. Um, and, and so with this device, you have access to Google Play Store. Um, and so you can download, um, you know, different apps or, you know, for example, if you, if you download Google, Google Docs, you have access to electronic documents that you can then, um, you know, magnify on this device. Um, you know, the nice thing about these devices is that they're very, um, you know, easy to, to use. As you, if you see, if you look towards the con controls here, like some of the basic features, um, you know, like the, the, the orange button here, for example, you, you, you just turn that to magnify the image. Um, or, you know, there's an on and off button, um, there's a button to, you know, change the contrast. And so, you know, th there are other features to it. Um, that can be more complicated, but you don't you don't necessarily have to worry about the complicated features. Um, you know, just for, you know, it's just for 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 reading and magnification purposes. Um, there's just a couple of basic uh, you know buttons. Okay, so this is a really popular uh, de device, um, also by Humanware. Uh, it's called the Explorer Eight. It has an eight-inch uh, 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 screen. It's lightweight, portable. 
and and you know very very easy to use. There's only three buttons on the on on the front there. Um, you know, make the image smaller, bigger, or change the contrast. Um, the you can actually use this device as a distance camera as well, but you you just have to hold it up. Um, the downside about uh, with this device is that um, is that you have to. You should. I mean, the easiest way to use it is to have it on a, on a tabletop, um, but you, you can hold it if if um, you, you, your hands are steady. And so this is a, another example of a, a, a portable electronic magnifier. The configurations are different, and this is what I wanted to kind of just point out with with this one is that you know these are. Um, I'm showing you some examples, but you, you should really. Um, you know, visit your your local adaptive technology uh, uh, store to kind of uh, evaluate the, the different models available in in this in, in the particular category because um, the, the configuration might um, you know will be important to you. Like for, for example, this this device um, will allow you to do writing underneath as well, and so um, it's great for for students. Not only the, because you can do the the reading and the writing. Uh, and it's, it's lightweight and, and, and foldable. You can also attach a, a distance camera on the top uh, here, and which will allow you to look uh, at things at a distance. So if there's any students uh, you know, listening today, um, you know, this is a device that can be used in, in the classroom, for, for example. And so, um, a newer category of electronic uh, devices are electronic glasses. And it, it, it's a similar concept to um, the electronic magnifiers, however you, you wear it. And so, there's a, a, a camera on the device that projects the, uh, the image onto a display a couple of inches from your from your from your eyes. And and um, and so, it, it's for most of these devices, it's 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 hands free. You wear it like glasses. Um, you know, each device has, uh, you know, um, I guess spe uh, special features that we'll, we'll be talking about uh, next. So this is an example of the eSight 4. eSight is a Canadian-based com a can a can a Canadian company that um, that's one of the first, um, you know, companies that came up with the or um, you know, developed this type of device. Now, the, the eSight uh, is something that I actually have here in the clinic that I was, I was going to put on for you just to show you. Um, but, you know, the, w once the image is on the display, then you can use a, a hand held remote like this to control the size of the, uh, the image. And, so, and, and they have a reading mode, um, and so you can use it for, for reading um, as well. But the reason why, you know, uh, patients like this device is because it's it's um, it's kind of like a, it's a it's a nice sleek device that that that's fairly comfortable to, to, to put on. So let me let me actually put it on for you to kind of demonstrate. So it's a, a pretty comfortable design, um, and you know you can. You, when you sit when you sit down to, to read, you know, you, you bring the, the visor down. Um, but you can also see things on the on the side of you and, and below you. So you're aware of like say other people entering the room for, for instance. Um, and so this is kind of a, 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 a unique uh, feature. Um, and you know I, I'll I'll kind of uh, show you why um, you know, in, in following slides, but this is a form of virtual reality, but it's not, uh, you know, you still have awareness of the world around you. And so when, if you wanted to like uh, top, uh, stop and, and take a break from reading and, and go to your kitchen to get a snack, you can lift up the visor, uh, you know, walk to your, your, your fridge, for instance, you open your fridge and you wanted to see what's in, what, what kind of snacks are in the fridge, then you can drop the visor very, very very easily, like so. Okay, and then in contrast to the next device I'm going to show you called the Iris Vision. Now, this this device here uses a, 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 a Samsung 
uh, vir uh, virtual reality headset and virtual or uh, Samsung phone. And so with this device, um, you know, it's a little more, more bulky um, and you have no peripheral uh, aware awareness. And so you really have to, when you use this device, you have to kind of be, you know, stationary, like in a seated position, because you, you can't really walk around with, with this uh, device because, well, I mean, you, you, you would trip. And, and the image you see inside is, because it's, it's magnified, everything's going to seem uh, closer and bigger than, it's re than it really is. And so you really have no depth perception. Um, but, but also, like, you know, those are the downsides of this device. But uh, the, the, um, the, the pros are, you know, this device um, has uh, the OCR te technology. Um, and and it, it also has different uh, uh, interesting modes that are, are, they're, they're kind of unique to it that might be helpful. Um, you know, for, for example, if you have a, a condition like glaucoma or red eyes pigmentosa where, you're, where your visual field is affected um, and you have a tunnel vision, you can, you can um, actually shrink the, the image to fit into your visual field. So you can see more of the room at one time. Um, and this is another mode here. This is called the bub uh, bubble uh, viewing mode. Um, and so with this, with this mode, you can, you know, magnify images centrally, but still have some peripheral awareness with the headset, you know, but the, the peripheral awareness, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a really wide visual field. It's, it's only up to about 70 de degrees. So it's, it's still kind of limited, but this is one way to still have a little bit of peripheral vision, um, despite, uh, you know, magnifying um, you know images uh, centrally and so next this is this is the uh, looks like I'm, I'm kind of running out of time so I I have a few more things to um, to, to show you so I'll see along uh, this is the the Jordy um, what's unique about this device is that um, it you can you can mount it um, or connect it to a, a monitor, so you can not only use it as a wearable device, but you can also use it as a, a, a desktop electronic magnifier. And now this is something I'm really excited about. This is not out on the market yet, but should be out soon. And we'll we'll actually be getting a a, a unit at the KCI uh, Institute, um, uh, you know, in 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 early 2021. And this is this is. Um, it's a virtual reality. This is augmented reality. So it allows you to interact with the uh, with the world because it's a, it's a clear lens, um, and you know it, it will um, uh, it will allow you to enhance your 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 vision where you where you need to enhance the vision uh, without um, without you know limiting your peripheral vision. Um, let me let me try to be more more clear. And so, what what is uh, happening with this device is that it maps out your your visual field. At, so it maps out where your your central scotoma is. It maps out where your central blur spot is. And so it knows where you can see and where you can't see. Um, and it also has a gaze tracker. So it knows where you're looking. And so if it has that information, then it will. Um, Op 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 opacify the lens um, where you're trying to look. Um, and so let me go to this next image here. And this is this is this is what this is what I mean. And so the image on the, the left is you know this is this is you're trying to read some text and you have that uh, central scotoma. The image on the right is is the device uh, using its computer mediated reality, so it, it it kind of pushes the image around uh, your your central uh, uh, scotoma, and so so you're you're not missing any any letters, even though there's a space between like the, the R and the E, for example. Uh, your brain does a pretty good job kind of uh, fitting that together and allowing you to um, you know read the word more quickly and comprehend more quickly. Um, and so that's that's the idea, uh, you know, um, with with this uh, device. Um, now, 
to be fair, though, that's 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 the idea. And 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 uh, study I read showed that it it did improve uh, visual visual acuity and visual function. Um, but I because it's so new, I haven't tried it in clinic. So it'd be interesting to see how how effective it is uh, for you know for uh, our patients. And if, if uh, you, your vision is, is decreased to a point where um, it's very, very difficult to, to read, um, despite uh, these other devices, you can rely on um, audio uh, to, um, you know, to, to read. This is this device called the Oracam My Eye 2. It, uh, it, it um, converts, it has OCR technology, so it converts text to speech. So essentially, you, it's a camera-based device that you can uh, attach to the side of your glasses via a magnet, and you can just point to the text that you would like to read, um, and it'll, it'll, it'll read to you. But it also does other things like, you know, facial recognition, reads barcodes, you know, does color identification. And so a lot of these features um, in these devices that I mentioned, um, you know, can can be can be found on your tablets or, and smartphones that you already have. Uh, it, it could be an iPad or a, you know an, an Android uh, phone, um, and and uh, you know reading on these devices, um, you know can be can be easier because you have uh, enhanced contrast, uh, but also you can uh, in, increase the, the text size. And so I, I do encourage you to. To read ebooks or e magazines, and you can, you can pay your bills online, um, and uh, you know. And then now, now let's kind of go through some of the uh, uh, other accessibility features because the other uh, the adaptive technology I mentioned previously, even though they, they work great, they can be very expensive. And so this is I want to talk about um, you know these uh, these features now that you may already have that uh, you know you don't have to spend any extra money um, on. And so the Apple iPhone, iPad have a number of accessibility features, um, and uh, including um, you know, the ones listed here, um, which is, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I'll have time to go through every a specific one, um, but uh, I want to point out that there are online, free online uh, workshops uh, um, on the hadley.edu website, and which will which will teach you how to use, um, you know, these these features for the Apple iPhone, iPad, including Android devices. Now, in the past, Android Android devices didn't really have great accessibility features, but lately they've really um, in, improved some of these features. And so, don't fret if you have an Android device. Um, and then I also give a, another resource here um, and talk about some other, uh, you, you know. Um, Accessibility features and and um, options available on the phones and tablets, but as as you can kind of see with the, the list here, um, you know you you have that electronic magnifier um, available on the on the iPhone already, and so you can you know it, it can it can read to you text that is external to your device, and so if you have a piece of mail, um, for for instance. You know, I guess your 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 home. I want your homework to be to go into your device, uh, go to settings, and then um, you know look for accessibility uh, as a menu option. Click on there and and, and find some of these features. Um, uh, you know, maybe start with like the, the magnifier feature and, and and see how well that that works for you. But I, I find that it's very uh, it works very 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 well. Um, and also, you can have you know the the, the text. Uh, on on your screen, read read to you, um, and so if you go to the, the speak screen option, uh, you know you can have you can have the device read you the whole newspaper article for for, for instance. But and this is something that I'm, I'm very interested about. Unfortunately, we're you know we're at times limited. But feel free to um, you know uh, check out the uh, this the, the workshop um, uh, that I posted here. Um, and you know you, you can have a whole a workshop on just on on or a whole course on just uh, these features. But you know I I think you can probably contact me via via uh, John Khan as well to um, to ask me questions about this. So, okay, so next 
uh, apps for the uh, visually impaired. I just, there's there's lots, you know. There's there's very, there's, there's there's many many. Um, but uh, two I want to highlight is, is seeing AI for um, by Microsoft. Uh, this is for the iPhone, the iPad. Yeah, this is uh, these have similar features as the, the OraCam uh, my uh, my i two. Um, it, it is like um, text to speech, so it can be text to you. Um, it can do facial recognition, object recognition. It, it has a barcode a scanner, and it's it's free. And so you can you know you can um, go ahead and, and download uh, if this uh, on your iPhone or iPad if um, you know if you, ha if you have that. But but um, but my Android patient or my patients who had like an Android phone, they had. They didn't have this. They didn't have this available for the longest time. But in the last uh, year and a half, uh, Google came out with Lookout. So it has similar features to the Seeing AI. It's also a free app. Um, and you know, originally it was for Google Pixel phones, but uh, more recently, uh, I think if you have a Samsung phone or an LG phone, um, you know, it should be available, especially the, the newer versions. So I would uh, encourage you to try that app. Uh, so, so for some other apps uh, for the visually impaired, uh, I did find a, um, a a good magnifying app for Android users because the magnifying uh, the magnifier is not built in uh, to Android phones, and so you know this is a magnifying glass plus flashlight uh, app is is free uh, for Android, um, and and so I have also a couple other links here to to learn about other. Other apps. Um, okay, so assistive software. Uh, so if, you, if you're a computer a computer user, um, you know magnification and a contrast, and you know these these things are already built in into the accessibility features of, of most computers, and, and it's 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 constantly improving. Um, however, you may come across like certain websites or, or, or programs. That uh, those display features do not work very well on, um, and so there there are options, um, you know, th third party uh, software that you can download, such as a Zoom Text Magnifier Reader that will magnify the, the text um, or um, you know, read read certain text that you highlight. Uh, if you if you have a very low vision um, and need you have difficulty navigating your, your computer, um, you can do that um, you know, via JAWS. So you can um, you know, navigate using you know, audio feedback um, only. Um, and it's a, it's a more advanced screen reader. If you are writing emails or writing a, um, a, a book and, 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 and you prefer to convert spe uh, speech to text, uh, the, I recommend Dragon uh, software. Um, and so next, I want to talk about script script talk. And so you know, reading uh, labels on your medication uh, is is a challenge for uh, many of my patients. And and so and this is a device that um, a lot of uh, pharmacies um, you know have, and they're available for you for, for free. And and so you know, it, it uses a, a RFID a reader. And so you place the medication bottle. On to this device, it will just read you the, the label. Um, it's very easy, very easy to use. Um, I have a a website here, and uh, you know, if you go to this website, you can put in your zip code. It'll tell you which pharmacies in your area uh, have um, you know have these devices uh, available for, uh, for you. And talking books, and and so if if I uh, uh, if you prefer um, audiobooks or listening to books, um, you know, but you're not very comfortable, you know, using uh, an iPhone or a, a tablet, uh, for instance, um, you know, Talking Books is, is a, a program uh, offered by the National Library Service. It's it's, it's free, um, and where they send you a cassette player and, and, and a cassette, and um, you know, you can listen to listen to books. Um, I. You may be able to go to your, your, your library and inquire about this, or you can go to your um, your, your eye doctor, for instance, um, or your visually health uh, specialist. And I, I can actually complete the application uh, for, for you. Or, or, um, 
Okay. Cool. And so, because, um, you know, I, I wanted to include music, you know, because that's, that's kind of a, 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 another common, um, you know, goal for my patients. So there's a couple devices available to help you with, with, with music. And, and one, this device in the picture is called the Lime Lighter by Dancing Dots. And um, this, this device allows you to scan in and upload your sheet music. And then when it's uploaded, then you can manipulate it to enhance the contrast and enlarge the text. You know, this, this specific uh, device can uh, magnify the, the, the notes by about 10, 10 times. It, um, the device comes with the, with the monitor and a, and a foot pedal and, and, and the software, of course. Um, or you can download, uh, it, seems like there's a, there's an app for, uh, it seems like there's an app for everything uh, these days. And so uh, on the iPad, there's a four score app uh, that can do something uh, similar, and you know, I think there is a, a cost to it, but it's a, a pretty low cost. And some additional resources, um, and so to re re review some of the concepts for reading and writing, I re recommend this uh, Vision Aware uh, website. Um, C CSUN, um, California State University of Northridge Assistive Technology Conference is a conference that I like to go to that's offered every year in the spring. Um, I think it's typically in Anaheim and they have uh, these, they have an exhibition, a very large exhibition with, with uh, companies from all over the world coming to display um, and show off their, their technology. Some of it's like stuff that's on the market. Other times it's, it's, um, it's experimental or still in development. But if you want to learn, if you want one central place to learn about all the adaptive technology available, I recommend uh, this conference. And if you just go to the expo, it's 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 free. Um, this this upcoming spring, I think they're doing they're going to do a virtual conference. So I'm not sure how they're going to do um, the the expo, uh, but keep keep an eye out for. Um, you know, for, for that in, in March and, and also subsequent years when it's you know, back on um, in Anaheim. And, you know, our, our local assistive technology company that we, we work with is Balance assistive, assistive Technology. And, and what I recommend, like I mentioned earlier, is, is to visit these, these stores and, and uh, see for yourself, like what, you know, what's, what's available. Um, and, and, and we, the, the, the staff that work there are usually very knowledgeable and can give a lot of information. Um, I would also recommend starting um, the conversation with your uh, vision rehabilitation specialist to figure out what kind of categories of devices you need first. Um, this, this way, it will kind of streamline your efforts uh, when you go to a, a assistive technology store and perhaps it'll you know, it ensure that you you don't um, you know buy something you don't need for for instance. And that was, that's just uh, Joan Khan's uh, email. Um, feel free to email her if you would like um, a, a list of the resources I mentioned during my talk. And uh, thank you very much. These are my kids, and I better go home and and uh, you know uh, enjoy Halloween with them this afternoon. And they are so cute. Thank you, Dr. Labram. I haven't seen um, any questions come through. I think people are e really eager to hear about the tools and technology, and you've just done a wonderful job of sharing those. So thank you so much. And it was all really insightful, and I'm sure it's really going to help a lot of people. So um, yeah, yes, of course. Um, if you don't have any more co uh, comments, Dr. Labram, um, I'll let everybody go. And thank you all so much for joining us. Um, if you do have any questions about the lecture, please feel free to email um, Joan on that email that's on the screen. And if anybody's listening from a mobile device, that's K-A-H-N-J at O-H-S-U dot E-D-U. Um, and this will conclude our webinar series. And thank you all so much for everybody who joined us. Thank you.